I've got something pretty cool to show you guys today. This right here is a Leonetti Ultranon, and it is a part of a very special, very unique set of lenses. The Ultranons were commissioned in 1979 by Frank Leonetti, who's the owner of Leonetti Cine Rentals in Los Angeles, and also father of Matthew and John Leonetti, who are both pretty esteemed cinematographers. Both are ASC members. They've shot a lot of stuff. I'd give them a Google. Now, a brief history on Leonetti Rentals. They were the creators and owners of the Ultracam 35. That was like their proprietary 35 millimeter film camera. The Ultracam was basically their version of the Panavision Millennium, and as a competitor to Panavision, they also followed the same business model where if you wanted to use their cameras or their lenses or their gear, you had to go directly through them and everything had to be a part of that Ultracam ecosystem. Now, the Ultracam 35 wasn't the most highly regarded camera in the industry at the time, with it having a variety of issues, the main one being jamming, so much so that a lot of ACs referred to it as the Ultrajam 35. There were only 15 of these cameras in existence, so when it came to making the lenses, only 15 sets were built. And when they were built, they were designed in a way where they would only work with the Ultracam. You see, with the Ultranons, the rear element of the lens would telescope as you focused. So what that meant is if you were to use this lens on any other film camera at the time, you would risk that rear element moving backwards into that spinning mirror and breaking the camera. Regardless, these lenses were used by the Leonetti brothers on a multitude of films. Child's Play 3, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and Angels in the Outfield, just to name a few. Now, somewhere between 1990 and 2005, Leonetti Rentals went bankrupt, and all of that inventory flooded out into the market. But because the Ultracam wasn't really looked at too fondly in the industry, and those lenses would only work on that camera, there wasn't really a lot of demand for them, so those 15 sets just kind of got lost over time. At least that was until this set popped back up on a marketplace in 2011, and then they got picked up. Now, I don't know exactly where they went when they got picked up, but I do know they spent some time at Lost Kuma Productions in Singapore, and now they reside at DFI Rentals in Los Angeles. And as of recording this video, these are currently the only known circulating set of Ultranons that you can get your hands on. The other 14 are just, they could be anywhere. Now I mentioned earlier that these lenses weren't able to be used on any camera other than the Ultracam. And that was true back when the primary medium was film. You see, with the rise of digital cameras, these lenses were given new life because with digital, you don't have that spinning mirror between the lens and the sensor. So you don't have anything that that rear element could possibly hit. So these were usable once again. And this is a great thing because aside from being a very rare set of lenses, what makes the Ultranon so interesting is that each lens, except for the 18 millimeter, is made up of elements from Cook Speed Pancros, Contact Zeiss, and Canon FDA Spiracles. And those are three of the most famous lenses that have been used for decades to shoot some of the most beautiful films. So naturally, with the Ultranons consisting of lens elements from all three, it's able to achieve a really beautiful, unique look of its own. Now, since these lenses are in their original housings, they are gonna come with some quirks. One is that the iris ring is not geared and it's also at the front of the lens, which is something I don't personally like that much. Just like the rear element, the whole front of the barrel is also gonna telescope whenever you focus. So if you wanna use a map box, you're gonna have to use a clip on. And the lenses are also a BNCR mount, which is a very old system. They are adaptable, but you're only gonna be able to use them on E-mount, RF, and LPL mount cameras. As far as build quality goes, these lenses are something you really have to like feel to believe. They've got really good weight to them. They're robust, they're all metal. The mechanics are fantastic. The focus and the iris are like butter. I mean, these lenses feel better than a lot of modern lenses and, and even modern rehouses that I've used recently. It's hard to believe that these lenses are 50 years old because they feel like they just came out of a factory. It's funny because they say made in the USA and they were clearly made in the USA at a time where that meant like really high quality and not we're gonna skimp on parts and sell you something cheap. <laughs> Oh, and most importantly, these things have the coolest lens caps I've ever seen. It has the name of the lens, the focal length, and the stop engraved into it. It's a matching metal finish with the actual body of the lens. And most importantly, the lens cap actually locks into the lens. Here, check this out. These lenses are pretty fast. Most of the set is at a 1.4, except for the 28 millimeter and the 135 millimeter, which are both 1.8, and then the 18 millimeter, which is a 1.9. These also do cover full frame, except for the 18 millimeter, again, which only does super 35. The 18 millimeter is kind of the outlier with everything here. They have a really nice vintage look. They're not too over the top. Bokeh is very smooth and waterfall-esque. They don't have that swirly, warpy looking bokeh that you'll find on lenses like the Helios or the Petzval. These are a lot more subdued. They're a lot closer to what you'd see on something like a Zeiss Super Speed, which I really like. I think lenses like these are gonna be really good for a more grounded narrative project where you wanna invite some character, but you don't wanna distract. I really enjoyed using these lenses. I think that they're super cool, super unique. They have a really interesting history to them, and they're also just super rare. 
I can't really think of any like modern day projects that have been shot on these lenses. And I'm sure there are some, but I mean, there's this entire gap of time where these lenses just disappeared and then a set magically shows back up and has just been circulating for the last 10 years. So I don't really know how much they've been used, but I do think they deserve some love because they are very special. Anyway, that's all I got. Bye.